Okay. So, um, if you remember, we briefly talked about what finance is in the, in, the, in the first class. And we said finance is basically the oil in the engine of the, of the economy. And we have capital providers, investors who have, have sources, and they provide money or, uh, to, to, the, to the system. Uh, through financial uh, markets, and then uh, capital users, investors, uh, are using that capital for real investments. Uh, they can buy factories, airplanes, uh, patents, copyrights, whatever. And when they make money, they return some uh, gain to the capital providers. So that's the circle of economy, let's say. And then we talk about uh, different uh, types of firms. Uh, and as I told you earlier, this class is corporate finance, so we are dealing with corporations. And in corporations, do you remember some of the characteristics <coughs> of corporations? <S> sorry? <coughs> yes. Limited liability. limited liability is one thing. What is limited liability? Do you remember? <laughs> limited liability. You remember it. Yes. Oh, it's your pen. Okay, so it's a beautiful pen. <laughs> but what's limited liability? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's like companies uh, can't not uh, take the, some responsibilities and uh, for example, it's company shouldn't uh, get a lot of liability from a bank or from anything. That's an interesting take. Actually, she's talking about capital rationing. Which means uh, the, the company shouldn't take lots of debt uh, to provide uh, money for investors. But in the sense I'm asking, I'm asking something else. I'm asking about owners. Who are the owners of corporations? Let's start from the basic. Yes. Shareholders, Shareholders or stockholders, it's the same thing. Equity holders, these are all the same thing, right? Stock, shares, com uh, common stock, equity. All, all the same thing. Okay, so shareholders own the company and shareholders have limited liability, which means, so how, how do you become an owner? Uh, if, you if, shares. if you buy shares, you become owner of a company, perfect. And? Uh, if the corporation uh, will bankrupt, they will uh, not give uh, money from their side. Exactly. So suppose that you bought a share of a company, GE, and suppose that GE went, went bank, bankrupt. The uh, GE CEO cannot knock on your doors and ask for additional money. So you have limited liability, means it, which means you cannot lose more than you uh, paid for the stock. That's it. Uh, in other uh, forms, if you remember, like in general partnership, for instance, there's unlimited liability. Whatever the company has in debt, the owner, the general partner, is supposed to pay for that debt also. And think about Bakkalamja. Bakkalamja has to uh, uh, maybe sell his own house to pay the debt of the Bakkal. So it's unlimited liability. In our case, in corporations, we have limited liability. Perfect. Uh, do you remember anything about taxation in corporations? <coughs> How the taxation works. Do you remember that part? Yes? Um, double taxation. Double taxation. What is, is it a good thing, double taxation? Probably not. How, how does the taxation system works? Why is it double taxation? Okay, if I want to figure out how much tax a company paid, where should I look? You took accounting classes. Okay. Think about financial statements. Huh? <coughs> Balance sheets, maybe income statements, right? 
Uh, in the income statement, if you remember, you started with revenue minus expenses minus depreciation, which we will co cover maybe this Friday or next Tuesday, depending on, on our time. Um, so you pay depreciation. Then we have earnings before interest and taxes. And then if the company has some uh, debt, then um, the, 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 the company pays interest for the, for the, for the uh, debt. And then we have the tax there. So companies pay tax to the government when they make money uh, based on their taxable income, earnings before taxes. And then, and then so this is the first taxation, the double one. So in the in income statement, we, OK, so that's uh, revenue minus expenses minus depreciation minus interest if the company has debt. This is taxable income earnings before taxes. You pay tax, you have net income. From this net income, the company can, not must, the company can pay dividends to the owners, to the shareholders. So if you have a stock of GE, then GE um, periodically pays some money to you. And part of the net income goes to Shareholders as dividends, rest of it stays in the company, addition to retained earnings. Do you remember the incomes, the, the general uh, look of income statement? Yes, you do. Um, okay, so dividends are paid to the shareholders, and as a shareholder, I have to pay tax uh, to the government on the dividends because it's additional income for me. So this is what the double taxation is all about. It's what happens in US, what happens in Turkey. The companies don't have to pay dividends though. It's, it's a choice they make. Uh, anything else? So uh, is there, okay, o are the owners also managers in companies? No, managers are CEOs, board of directors. And o uh, can owners pick CEOs? Can we pick CEOs as shareholders? Can we what? Yes, we can actually. Uh, do, we, do I have it here? Maybe, maybe today we're going to talk about it. Uh, every time there is a general meeting, actually all the shareholders are informed about it. You can go to the meeting or you can use your vote on any important matter, whatever it is. It can be merger and acquisition decision, change of board of directors, anything. You can vote through uh, via email, phone, uh, and I don't know, normal mail probably. So you can vote on it, okay? But owners are different than managers. There's separation of ownership and management, which will cause lots of conflicts. We're gonna talk about those today. Uh, and, okay. Uh, why do uh, firms turn into corporations? They start with as like partnership, for instance. Then they turn into corporations. Why? Exactly. So to to be able to reach more for sources, they uh, they um, become corporations. Uh, they they sell. We will also talk about those. They will sell their stocks to the public through initial public offering. Initial first time, public. All the stocks are sold to the public. Public means us. Uh, okay. Uh, and then they become corporations. Uh, of course, the process to, to uh, form a corporation is long. There are lots of legal, pap uh, legal work, paperwork, whatever. But after that, uh, things get actually kind of easy, let's say, because of a limited liability, separation of ownership and management. Oh, one thing I just remembered, what was it? Oh, transfer of ownership. Is it easy uh, for shareholders to tra transfer their ownership? Yes, you sell your stock to someone else, that's transfer of ownership, that's it. Okay, so we talk about those things. And then one more thing, I showed you a big picture about uh, what CEOs can decide about. We talk about capital budgeting decisions. What is capital budgeting decision? What was it about? Capital budgeting decision. You know it. Give me an example of a capital budgeting decision. A 
Apple just announced its new product, right? iPhone 6S, right? So it was a capital budgeting decision. Everything about investment decisions are capital budgeting. What kind of investments you should take is capital budgeting decision. Uh, like a company going to, like Walmart for instance, which is a big uh, chain store in US, uh, if they think about opening a store in Turkey, it's a capital budgeting decision, it's an investment decision. They have to figure out whether it's profitable or not, for instance. Okay, so that, that, that's important. Uh, do you remember what financing decisions are about? That's, that, that's easy. What's financing decision? Yes. Which way you, we should use to raise money? Exactly. Once you figure out what kind of investment you're going to take, the second step will be where the money will come from. So we talk about iPhones and I'm, yes, I need to check the time there's, okay. Uh, okay, yes, uh, you figure out which investment you should take, then the sec second step, where the money will come from. The company can use uh, its own money. Here, remember I said addition to retained earnings, earnings that are retained in the company. The, mo uh, the money uh, the company has in its vaults, in the, in the company itself, or the company can use debt, public or private debt, we're going to talk about it, or the company can issue stocks and raise money. By issuing stocks, basically I'm printing stocks. It's a piece of paper which gives ownership to you, to the, to the shareholders, and I sell it to you. Of course, you pay me the price of the stock to buy that piece of paper and ownership uh, from me, and this way I can also raise money. So financing decision is all about where the money will come from. The last part was payout decision. I know which investment to take. I know where the money will come from. Everything is going smoothly. Hopefully I made some money. The payout decision is about this. Am I going to pay dividends or not? Or if there are shares outstanding in the, in the, in the, in the, in the public, should I buy stocks from the shareholders? Because when I buy stocks from you, I have to pay you money. It's a different, uh, uh, different kind of payout, paying out to you, basically. So these are the payout decisions. And all those decisions, everything the CEO, should, uh, every decision CEO is uh, taking is all about one objective. What was the objective <coughs> of the firm? Main goal of a comp corporation. <coughs> Maximize value. value. Perfect. What is maximizing value? Don't laugh. Don't say what you have in your mind. <laughs> not profit. I know. I know that. Not profit maximization. No, 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 no. No. Thank you. Thank you. It's all about maximizing the value of the company. And remember, I showed you balance sheet. Today we're talking about financial statements a lot, but. If you remember balance sheet, we have assets here, we have debt and equity here. And since this is balance sheet, it should be balanced. So assets value should be equal to debt plus equity value. So when you increase the value of the company, you're basically increasing the value of the assets, which is equal to maximizing debt and equity value. Maximizing debt has some problems. What, the, uh, what is the first thing that comes to your mind about maximizing debt? Bankruptcy. If the company has lots of debt, the probability of bankruptcy increases. So that's problematic. So we can maximize value through maximizing equity value. When I look at the balance sheet, maximizing uh, this, uh, we can maximize the value, but this is backward looking. Right? This is balance sheet. This is all about what happened in the past. So I said, instead of looking at the balance sheet equity value, which is historical value of the equity, the uh, value of the equity when you sold the shares to the public in the first place, I said I, you should look at the market value of equity. What is market value of equity? How can I find the market value of uh, IBM? <laughs> Exactly, market value of equity is basically the stock price times numbers of shares outstanding. So if there are, I don't know, if there's a company with 100 shares 
And if the price of each stock is $1, the market value of this company will be $100. So which, this is also equal to market capitalization. I will assign you a homework actually, and I will assign you, each one of you, a different company, and I will ask you to fill out like, like a little uh, questionnaire kind of thing, like fill in the blanks. And I want all of you to go to any finance web page Yahoo Finance, Google Finance, MSM Finance, and you will fill out those like one page page thing. It will be easy. And market capitalization, you will find in any finance page, is equivalent to market value of equity. Stock price times numbers of outstanding. Uh, so this price information is very important. Why? So when I look at the price of a stock, what kind of information it has in it? Is there like historical information in it? Yeah, I mean, it is the price. If historically the company did well, the stock price increased, so it's a cumulative of what happened in the company. Does it have information about the present of the company? How about future? Does it have information about the future of the company? Huh? Yes, so when, when you're, I don't know, if, if you're looking into buying some stock, what kind of stock would you buy? A stock whose price was like increasing in the last two years all the time? Or it's like going down all the time? Actually, this answer will, will depend, but what, what do you say? If your answer, if your rationale is, is correct, your answer is correct. Yes? Of course, the raising. Okay, you can go with the raising one, saying that, okay, the CEO is really good, it's, he's taking good investments, the value of the company is increasing, you can go after it, or... And the second one, maybe it will go up. The second one may, okay, so if the CEO is not changing anything, and if things are going downhill all the time, everything is the same, probably you're going to say, okay, this guy cannot do anything, okay, the CEO is not capable of taking good investments. In that case, just stay away from it. But if you think that, okay, the CEO changed or there's just a new investment, everything will go better, if you can take this as a hint, you can go with that also. But in both of the cases, the price actually had information about the future aspect. So whenever you're looking at the price, you have a feeling wrong, correct or incorrect, you have a feeling of what the company will do in the future. So this price information is really important. That's why we say in the academia, in finance academia, we are all obsessed with price. We are trying to price uh, investments. We are, trying to, uh, we, are, we are trying to maximize the price of stocks. This is all uh, we are doing. OK, so this was like a, a little uh, recap of what we did uh, in, the, in the last uh, hour. Uh, today, I think this was the last thing I showed you, if I remember correctly. Uh, we talk about stakeholders in the company. Everyone who has a stake in the company is a stakeholder. Can you give me an exam uh, examples of stakeholders? Suppliers, Sub government, suppliers government, government, employees, employees public, shareholders. public, exactly, uh, shareholders, debt holders, customers. customers Managers, these are all stakeholders. And I will focus on uh, main ones, and I will tell you the dynamics between them. Uh, this class is also like, like blah, 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 kind of, kind of class. I will tell you stories, okay? There's no uh, number or anything. But just after that, it's all about, it will be about problems and numbers and everything. I don't know which one you like. But when I say numbers, it has stories behind it, okay? So corporate finance. Uh, is all about actually, even in the in the research in, in corporate finance we find we deal with data we find some numbers using <coughs> statistics and econometrics and then we uh, tell you a story so um, if I can find you like a nice uh, academic paper I will assign you to read it you will see that they, they are very fun to read it's not like uh, very heavy like econ or math uh, kind of kind of papers corporate finance papers are really fun we're kind of telling stories, okay? So don't be afraid of corporate finance. It's, I think it's, it's a nice area. Okay, so in an ideal world, what, what should happen? And what happens in real world? This is what we will talk about. 
So normally stockholders, the owners of the, in, in the company, they can hire and fire managers uh, through, uh, I told you about this, through uh, votes and stuff. And managers want to maximize share, uh, shareholder wealth. Right? This is the, uh, the goal of a corporation, maximizing uh, stockholder wealth. Again, in an ideal world, debt holders, you can think of uh, banks when I say debt holders. Banks lend money to the firm. Uh, corporations are legal entities. Right? They, they, are, uh, they, are not, um, they don't need shareholders or managers to be alive. Uh, every time the, the corporation uh, signs an agreement, it is the corporation versus the other part, okay? So it's not the CEO signing the agreement, it's basically the corporation. It's a separate leg legal entity. <coughs> oh, no, no, what I'm trying to say is corporations can live forever. Even the, uh, the, the owners die, or, uh, or uh, us, owners die, or the CEOs die. Like Steve Jobs died, Apple is still around. This is what I'm trying to say. Apple is separate from, uh, what was the, the new CEO, uh, Tom? Huh? Tim Cook. I always forget about that. I don't know why. Tim Cook, yeah. Uh, so uh, the, the, the Apple is separate from uh, Tim Cook. When Apple signs an agreement with a bank, it's not Tim Cook signing the agreement. It's the Apple, basically. So it's a legal separate entity which can live forever. This is all I'm trying to say. Uh, so when uh, banks lend money to the firm, uh, they hope that managers will pr protect debt holder interests. So managers will take good projects and will try to pay back to the, to the, to the bank. In the financial markets, in all the system, financial markets are really important. I told you about it. All the uh, money exchanging hands go goes through financial markets. So in an ideal world, markets are efficient. All prices, as we said, prices are very important. All prices reflect true value of investments, true value. So there are no bubbles. We will talk about bubbles later. And um, assess effect on value. Every time there's an announcement, we will know if uh, markets are efficient, we will know what kind of reaction will happen. Again, in an ideal world, managers reveal information honestly on time, honestly and on time. So the CEOs are not hiding any bad information from you in an ideal world. And as society, managerial decisions have no social cost. And even if there are costs, costs can be traced to the, to the firm. So this is the ideal world case. What can go wrong? We see this all, every day, all the time. Uh, let's start with stockholders. So I said, as stockholders, we have the voting right. But Let's be honest, are we going to vote? Even if we got the um, uh, info letter about the general meeting, are we going to deal with voting? Probably not. Uh, we, and if there are little uh, separate investors, lots of separate little investors, we're probably are going to say, I'm not going to affect what's going to happen in the company. So we have little control over managers, actually. We don't know what they're doing all the time. And managers may put their interest above stockholders. We're going to go uh, in detail about those, so I will quickly go through the slide. Debt holders lend money to the firm, but debt holders can get ripped off. Of course, the, the managers know more about the company than debt holders, and managers can actually trick debt holders, and we're going to see how. Uh, Financial markets case, markets make mistakes and markets can overreact to some announcements which shouldn't happen in an efficient market. And managers, uh, they may uh, delay bad information or provide misleading information to, to us. And the last part is managerial decisions have, have major social costs on the society. Uh, and some costs, unfortunately, cannot be traced to the firm. So now I want to go into more detail uh, about all of those problems because uh, we uh, tell all of those things as a corporate governance in academia and I, I do research on corporate governance as well. All those conflicts or how those conflicts can be resolved. And actually corporate governance is especially important for uh, a more, more developing country like Turkey. So I will talk about what happens in general and you can 
take away little things uh, from this class. And when you become CEOs, you should pay attention to corporate governance because uh, good governance means good value. So, and your, your only aim is to create value for society, for, for, the, for the stockholders. OK, let's talk about the relationship between firms and society. First, um, there are, it's good that we have corporations. Why? They create employment, which is good. And also, they produce low-cost products. Best products are, are produced. We're so lucky that Samsung and Apple are in this war, and they're trying to produce uh, better products all the time. Uh, but still, like the, the better of those phone, phones, like go, uh, is done in one day. I hate it. I don't know. Like we're in 21st century, and I can live with like one day uh, without recharging my phone. No, not, not even one day. Like three, four hours, it's gone for some reason. But still, like normally, they are producing low-cost products. But the bad things about corporations are some corporations have some monopolistic behavior. So they're trying to be the only one, the biggest one in the, in the market. And in that, in that case, you probably remember from econ classes, monopoly is good for companies. It's bad for uh, the customers. Why? When there's a monopoly, do you want to answer? OK. You may. <laughs> Exactly. There are no options. So there's one uh, producer of a product. So whatever the price they decide, you have to go with it. And there's no competition. There are huge barriers of entry. So no other companies can enter. And further, you're going to say, oh, even <coughs> Now, can we have monopolistic behavior? Yes, actually in mergers and acquisitions, this is one thing regulators really care about. If a company is buying another company which might create some monopolistic um, environment, then the government says, no, wait, just, just wait, you, can, you can't do this. Uh, for instance, um, give me an example with computers. Uh, compu uh, hardware and software system, if they are really, really aligned, I remember with, uh, we, when we didn't have Apple, we had um, Microsoft, and Microsoft was doing everything. And in, for, for some of their, their mergers, the government said, no, you can't, you can't do it, because it's going to induce monopolistic behavior. So this is one important thing. Regulators, regulators should be really careful about it. And the other uh, bad thing about having lots of firms is, of course, pollution and traffic. So these are uh, the, the costs we have to bear a society to have corporations. Uh, OK. So um, now more and more environmentally aware companies are uh, around. And th they are doing this not because they really care about the environment, but they also figure out that socially responsible investment is really in. So it's really trendy. So when investors, shareholders are picking stocks, they look at what kind of non-profit investments the companies are making. You see all the companies supporting arts, festivals, whatever. Of course, they are doing this because there's tax reduction. Uh, but still, I mean, this is important for, for companies. So they're trying to be more and more, uh, more, and more green, basically. Um, and whenever you're not happy with what a company is doing, of course, there are some actions we can take as stakeholders. Uh, there are uh, society response through regulations. Antitrust is something I tol told you about in M&A, active mergers and acquisition activities. There are antitrust laws which uh, regulate uh, monopolistic behavior. Uh, for pollution, also normally in well-functioning markets, uh, companies uh, have to pay whatever uh, pollution they create. Uh, they have to be really checked uh, whether they are uh, destroying the environment or not. The other one is consumer choice, activism, or boycott. Uh, as uh, customers, I'm not talking about investors, I'm talking about the customer product buying part, you can stop uh, buying from a company with bad reputation, which is a response you can take, which is really important, actually. 
like uh, when the BP oil spill happened, I was in the US and I remember most of my American friends said, we're not going to buy any oil from BP anymore. It was a huge deal. For some reason, we kind of forget about it. Uh, but people, people just stop buying from BP. That's something you can do. I just told you about investor activism. Social responsible investors are important. Uh, they, people buy from companies with good reputations. And of course, legal environment is also important. Uh, there are lots of protections. If you are not happy with pollution in your area, you can sue the, the corporation. If it makes sense, then you, uh, something, I don't know. Uh, the, 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 um, they, they can make uh, decisions that will be in favor of you, uh, which, which might be good. Uh, but whatever you do, the important thing is uh, still creating value for customers. I told you, like all those social responsible actions are to create value to, to stockholders. Let me ask you this uh, question. Um, there is no right answer to that. So I will just read it, and uh, you can uh, comfortably answer whatever you think. Assume that you work for Disney and that you have an opportunity to open a store in an inner city neighborhood. The store is expected to lose about $100,000 a year, but it will create much needed employment in the area and may help revitalize it. So my question is, would you open that store or not? Who says, yes, I would open the store? There's, there's no right or wrong answers. So don't, don't be scared. Would you open the store? Who says, no, I wouldn't open the store? Who says, yes, I would open the store? OK. How about the rest of the class? <laughs> you don't care? <laughs> I, I'm not trying to sell you a stock. This is just a yes, on, yes or no. I'm not going to make you open the store if you, if you say yes. OK, thank you for not responding at all. Thank you so much. And. Um, People who say, yes, I would open it. What's your reasoning? Yes? Uh, but Disney has a lot of profit, make a lot of profit. It's not uh, big money to lose 100 uh, for a year. Uh -huh. And uh, while the Disney gets new employees, you also, uh, the employees will be willing to buy uh, some, some stocks. So, uh, I'm not sure it, it won't be uh, balanced uh, expense and revenues, but uh, it's not real. It won't be a big problem for this thing. Anything to add? The same year, Disney is making thousands of millions of dollars a year, and it's not a big loss for them, and eventually they have to earn the money that they have spent there in years. So people who say n no, why do you say no? This is not a charity. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's the happiest place in the world. <laughs> if they want to help, help, help some people out, they can help. They can really help them, not by building a store. I think a store of them losing money is a bad impression. Uh, without, without, the, it's not important how, how much money they make a year. Okay, and you? It's all about your job. If you make this money to your company, you just get fired. OK, you guys, you're, you're both right. But we understood who is really like uh, the CEO of potential people. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. The people who said, no, no, I mean, you may, but not the rest of <laughs> I'm sure you will be <laughs> one day. <laughs> Why did I say no? Because people who said no can be even better CEOs. Why? If I, if I had this, and I, I don't care what my intention is, OK? Maybe I'm really greedy, or, or I really want to make some uh, charity work as a CEO. It doesn't matter. It's all about how you tell this to your customers, to, to your investors. So if I tell you, yeah, we're going to lose money, but you know, there are people there. It's, it's, it will be good. 
then nobody, none of your stockholders will say, okay, go with it. But you can say, you know, we're gonna make a huge advertisement out of this. You know, it's gonna be like, oh, we are really good as Disney, we're helping people, and it's gonna be good for our customers. People will go to Disney World even more. They will buy Disney products. They will go to our movies. So we can put it there and we can like have those little, uh, lots of uh, photos with the kids of the employees there, whatever, you can sell it. Okay, that's why I said, you can say no, Oh, I don't want to lose money. Or you can say, yeah, we're losing $100,000, but I'm going to create $10 million out of this through other operations. You know, uh, the firms, they're not, they're really like, like buddies, you know? Like, it's a, it's a really complex organism. One part doesn't mean the only part. So here, losing $100,000, it's a loss for that store only, but there might be indirect effects, and you can create value indirectly, you can, as I said sell more products, I don't know, sell the movie tickets, whatever, take people to Disney World, it doesn't matter. And when we have time, when maybe in the, in the break, I will tell you about Disney World, it's, it's, a, it's a crazy place. And it's a, you know, Disney World, you will think, oh, it's nice, it's for kids, if kids are happy there. No, the, the, the guy, uh, Walt Disney, created a town out of nowhere. Let, let, let me just talk about it, and then we're gonna take a break. Because I, I, I was in awe, okay, yeah. Good for you for taking franchising? Oh, it depends. I remember, uh, I just talked to a friend of mine who I couldn't give names here, but maybe in the break. Uh, he wanted to do a franchise of a really well-known Turkish brand. The money they asked for it was ridiculous, so he didn't take the investment. It's all about the investment decision. Franchising might be a good idea, or it might be a bad idea. It's all about your agreement with the, with the company. I hear lots of ridiculous agreements conditions though, and people don't accept it. One thing, and uh, Disney World, and then we're gonna take a break. Um, I, I, I went there twice, uh, Disney World, Florida. It is an amazing place, but amazing is not about the investment part, uh, or investment part, it's all about planning. So Walt Disney did this. I watched lots of documentaries about it because I'm in academia, I have to do research all the time, even if I'm having fun. But that was interesting. Like, suppose that you're just walking on the street, right? And you think that the street is the ground level, right? Ground level. No, actually you're in the first floor of the entire town. Everything is in the ground, you don't see it. Like there, you don't see uh, like trash, there are trash bins. You don't see any workers walking around, uh, maintenance people, uh, cleaning people, you don't see anyone around. Because when you put your trash in, since you're in the first floor, the trash goes to the ground floor, actually, and everything is, is done without like, people seeing it. It's, it's ridiculous. It's amazing. And for all the food, they have the, the farms there, and all the food you eat in Disney World, in every restaurant you eat, all the food comes from, again, it's like a little country itself. It's just, it comes from uh, their own farms. So the cost is really low for them. E everything is like, it's a fake world. But it's a really uh, well thought world. I don't know. Did you go to our Disney World? <laughs> did you? Look up. <laughs> <laughs> we have, we have, we have some some place else. It's it's new. Anka Park. Anka Park. Uh, it's not. I thought it was. I see people on Facebook with the with, no. Uh, I'm sure it's also very well taught investment, so yeah, I, I'm sure we... Okay, uh, let's take a 10 minute break and then we're gonna continue.